This time we're going to take a look at Azure Active Directory authentication strengths. What are they? How do they work? And more importantly, what can they do for you? Stay tuned. You're going to learn something. Greetings, my fellow YouTubers. Welcome to the channel. Hey, I hope that you're having a great Easter holiday because many of the uh, schools uh, are, of course, throughout Europe are on holiday right now. So this time I thought I would take a look at Azure Active Directory's authentication strengths feature. And this is a feature that's really enhancing MFA. One of the things that a lot of customers complained about was that multi-factor authentication good as it was, it was either on or off and it was kind of limited. Well, authentication strength changes all of that because you can now customize your own strengths that best meet your requirements for your organization. But just how does it work? Well, I've got a really nice demo that I'm going to walk you through the whole thing and also how it integrates with the likes of conditional access as well. Now, um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, well, you know what I'm going to say. Come on board. Come and join us. Click on that subscribe button up there. Ring that bell and you won't miss out on any videos or notifications. And of course, if you want to make a comment, question, in fact, anything at all, please just get them down below and I will do my very best as always to answer them for you. So I think without any further ado, we'll jump in with the demo and I really hope that you enjoy this. So Azure Active Directory, authentication strength. Alrighty, I'm starting here in the Microsoft Entra Admin Center. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into Azure Active Directory and I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm looking specifically for this, protect and secure. So in here, you can actually uh, have a look at either authentication methods and you'll find authentication strengths here, or alternatively, you can go into conditional access and again, you'll find the same thing here. Either way, it doesn't really make any difference which one you choose. I'm gonna come into conditional access here and by default, you get three basic um, multi-factor authentication strength. I would suppose you would call them profiles. And these are kind of three that are built in. So if I go into multi-factor authentication here, you can see that um, this is essentially what I'm going to allow for MFA. So either Windows Hello for Business or a FIDO key or certificate-based communications. Uh, and you can either do or these different options here. All right. So uh, again, you can see federated single sign, uh, single factor plus an M SMS. Um, so again, as I said, you can easily customize this yourself. But what makes this interesting is that you can also create uh, profiles here as well. So for example, I'm uh, in Oslo. So I'm going to say, yeah, I want to create an Oslo HQ um, authentication strength. Okay. And I'll just call this uh, zero one. Okay. So again, I could put in a little description and here you can see that you've got different kind of formats, if you will. So different categories of um, authentication. So single factor authentication, a password. I'm thinking you probably don't want to choose that one. That's not really good. Um, very poor security. So rather than this, I can then say, okay, um, I actually want to create my own custom um, authentication strength. So I want to bring in Windows Hello for Business. I might want to do certificate based authentication um, for passwordless. Um, again, I'll say, yeah, let's do the, uh, you want to allow the phone sign in um, with multi-factor authentication. You might want to let users use the temporary access pass. Um, we can uh, either choose a one-time use or multi-use. So again, for additional security, you might not want to use that one. Um, password plus multi-factor authentication push notification. Again, that really depends on whether you still want to use passwords as an authentication method. 
Um, again, you can also combine it with other tokens as well. So for example, hardware tokens, um, if you want to bring it with password and voice, for example, voice recognition. Um, however, I'm a, that makes me a little bit nervous because you know there's so many AIs out there with voices where you would swear it's the actual person, you understand? Um, so we can then come into federated single factor. So if you're using uh, Active Directory Federation services, but you can see you can use a number of these different uh, mechanisms here. So I'm going to use the authentication for sign in um, again, and you can you can choose any of these that you want to as well. So you can see that the fact is that you can go in, you can choose um, which options you want to bring in. So I'm using phishing resistant multi-factor authentication. So again, you can go through each of these and say basically what you want to uh, support. Okay, so now I'm gonna say, now that I'm happy with that, I'm gonna click on next. And again, you can see that I get my options here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that profile. So that just takes a few minutes. So as I said, you can either go through the authentication strengths from within conditional access, or you can simply go in from authentication methods themselves. So and you can now see I've got a, my own policy. So where can I use this policy? Well, um, I can, of course, go into conditional access. So I'm gonna go into my policies here. I'm, I can all, also create a policy or of course I can use the template policies here. Just to say, by the way, if you've not been into the template policies for a while, they have kind of gone on steroids at the moment. So you can see that we now have specific categories. So secure foundation, so things like blocking legacy authentication, um, requiring multi-factor authentication for uh, any kind of Azure management, and then, of course, we've got zero trust. Zero trust, verify everything. We assume breach, of course. Um, and, of course, always use the principle of least privilege. These are the foundations of zero trust. So remote work, whether you want to protect the, the admin account here. Um, only thing about this, of course, is remember multi-factor authentication for admins. So we need to require that. The only issue I have with that, of course, is that Microsoft recommends that you have two break glass accounts. So a break glass account is what happens if you get stuck in multi-factor authentication and you simply can't get back into your account. Microsoft recommend that you have an incredibly complex password on an admin account and essentially that you lock it in a safe and you secure it as much as possible. You can find out more about that on learn.microsoft.com, by the way. So I'm gonna go back into my conditional access policies and I'm going to create a new policy by scratch. So in here, I'm gonna call this my Oslo HQ policy. And I'm going to say this is for my users, is it for all users? I'm gonna select users and groups. So in this case, I'm gonna say users and groups and perhaps any guests, so you can include them if you want to. Um, I'm gonna say this is for my Oslo and Oslo HQ and my Oslo project team. So I'm gonna click on that. Now, as I've said in the past, conditional access looks at signals. OK, so these are the signals. So is it based on cloud apps or specific apps? Is it based on a user's actions or an authentication context? For the purpose of this demo, I'm using all cloud apps. I'll just say all cloud apps. Then I'm going to say, OK, they must meet these conditions. So do, does the user present any kind of risk? So again, I could say, yeah, high and medium risk, that's fine. I could say um, sign-in risk. So are they particularly risky in the forms of sign-in? I could say, yes, that's fine. 
Um, are they using a particular device platform so we could travel back to the early noughties and block the Windows phone? I don't know why that's still in there, but there we go. Um, I, for this purpose, I'm just going to say any device. You can also exclude devices here as well. So if you want to exclude a particular device, you might have separate policies for different devices, for example. Um, sorry, I'll click on done. Uh, next is locations. So uh, again, if you've got a trusted location. So for example, if I'm in the Oslo office today, um, I don't need you to do multi-factor authentication because you're already in a secure location. So I could say, yep, selected locations. I've got one here called Norway and multi-factor author authenticated trusted IP addresses. So for example, that could be people that work at home. And let's face it, many of us do these days. Okay, so the next thing then is client apps. So um, I always say this, yes, of course, I want to use browser and mobile apps, but I do not want to use legacy apps. Remember what I said about legacy apps is that they ignore multi-factor authenticator rules. So potentially this is a serious backdoor for a potential phishing attack. Um, and then finally, this is great. This is actually a form of ABAC or attribute based access control. So we spoke about devices coming in, but you can actually go in here and you can include or exclude um, dynamic um, devices. So I could say if it's using a particular device ID, um, let's say device ownership, you might want to create a policy for device ownership. And I could say, yeah, this equals, and I could say, okay, let's do one for corporate devices. So I could say, yep, yeah, as long as they're coming in on a corporate device, that's fine. As long as it's a, a managed device. Okay. So those are my signals. All right. Now, based on those signals, am I going to grant access or block access? Well, if I do grant access, do I require multi-factor authentication. But you can also see authentication strengths is here as well, but I can't click on it. And the reason for that is because you've selected the default setting. But now I can go ahead and I can actually choose my authentication strength. So you can see here, I've got my Oslo HQ. So there's my Oslo authentication strength. I've got some other options here as well. So if you're pushing out devices in Intune, I can require the device to be compliant, um, require the approved client app. So you can set a list of approved apps that you're happy with. You can also do app protection policies as well. So making sure that those, those apps are up to date. Um, and you can either choose here to require all of the controls or just one of them. So for the purpose of this demo, I'm quite happy with that. And I'm going to click on next. Now that I've granted control, um, the next thing is you want to control the session, how long they're on for. So again, I can set up uh, app enforced restrictions, and you could do this via uh, Microsoft Defender for cloud apps. Or I could use a conditional access cloud, uh, sorry, conditional access app control. And you can set this up so the user can't download any files, for example. They can only view them online. That's really nice. And you can also create your own uh, custom policies in there as well. Um, how often do you want the user to re sign in again? So again, you could say, you know, every 30 days or hours or weeks. So if you worked in a bank, you might want to force users to sign in again. Are you going to allow a persistent browser session? That means the cookie that says, you know, keep me signed in. Do you want that or do you not want that? So again, maybe you could be in a financial institution. So that's something that you may not want. Um, again, you, resilience. So again, do you want to do resilience? This one is continuous access evaluation. So this is continually monitoring all the security features in Azure and 365. And basically, 
if anything doesn't look right, what it will do is it will send out a challenge to the user to re-authenticate again. And then finally, require token protection to sign in sessions. This is currently in preview. And if you want to know more, there is a link here. And uh, I'm going to cover that in a, preview, in a future session, by the way. So let's click on select. So I've now done my uh, control. Now you can, you can actually switch this on if I want to. I can do it in report mode. Um, for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to choose report mode, actually. So I'm going to click onto that. So I've now done uh, my conditional access policy along with an authentication strength. Uh, Andy, how do I see that? That's a good question. So when the user logs in, what will happen is if I just come into my um, Azure, sorry. That's a good question. So if I come into Azure AD again, and if I scroll down to monitoring and health, you've got the sign-in logs here, of course. So in the sign-in logs, um, I can go in here, I can open up one of these entries, and you can see we actually have a conditional access tab here, and um, it shows you how, you know, did this conditional access policy impact this particular user? But we also have a reporting only mode option here as well. And you can see that in this case, that policy has been applied to that user. So there you have it, Azure AD authentication strength. Isn't that cool? Especially when you combine them with conditional access. Hey, well, listen, I really hope that you enjoyed today's session. And if you did, then of course, please click the like button. It really does help my channel. And go ahead, subscribe. Come on, join us. Uh, we'd love to have you on board. And questions and comments, of course, just get those down below and I'll do my best for you. That's it for today. You stay safe. I'll see you next time. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.